And you'll be shocked when you learn this today how many Muslims say La ilaha illallah, but they don't know these things. And they don't come with these things. And because they don't come with these things, their La ilaha illallah holds no weight. I'll tell you a story. I teach a sister's class every Saturday. And there was a sister who's a revert, and she came to the class. And when I taught this, and she'd been revert for two years. When I taught this, at the end of it, she was like, Subhanallah, I need to take my shahada again. She was like, I actually never knew any of this stuff. And no one ever taught it to me when they were giving da'wah to me. And I've just literally learned it today. So imagine that. I had to retake the shahada in the class. Now, alhamdulillah, you know, she's, she's solid now, mashallah, Allah barik. But the point is, no, do the people who are the general laymen know this? Nor the people who are giving da'wah know this. Nor the people who are giving da'wah know this. I, I, I told, I'm going to tell you something. And some of you are going to get shocked. But I am, and, and, and I, the only reason I have no problem mentioning it to you, because it's not a fitna for me, because it means nothing to me. But how many people do you think I gave shahada to? That I gave da'wah to and they took shahada at my hand? How many people do you think? Take a number, take a guess. Two million? No, okay, that's a bit mad. <laughs> Reasonable guess, please. An educated guess. No, okay, that's mad. <laughs> 2,000. <laughs> People have been giving that one for their whole lives. They haven't even given 2,000. Go ahead. Less than 200. Huh? About 125 to 150. And that was only in three years of giving that one. I gave that one to people at my hand. I gave shahada to about 125 to 150 people. Majority in the UK, people in Norway. I remember one trip we went to Norway, 20 people took shahada. At the da'wah table, sometimes four people would take shahada from me. Around the world. But shall I tell you something? All of those shahadas were baseless. They were all baseless. Because I had, when I was giving them da'wah, what is da'wah to? La ilaha illa, right? It's true. La ilaha illallah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal when he sent him to Yemen, he said, إِنَّكَ تَأْتِي قَوْمٍ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلَ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ شَهَادَةُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he sent Mu'adh to give da'wah, he said, the first thing you call them to is La ilaha illallah. Now, me, I jumped ahead of the race. I jumped ahead of the gun. I started giving da'wah before I started seeking knowledge. Before I had any understanding of La ilaha illallah. So little did I know that I myself didn't have the knowledge. And al faqid al la yu'ti. The person who's empty, he can't give. So if I don't have the knowledge of la ilaha illallah myself, can I give it and pass it on to someone else? I can't. So all day, every day, I'm talking to people. And all day, every day, they take a shahada with me. But what am I teaching them the shahada is at the time they take it? I say, there's no God except Allah. And they would say that with me. I would say, okay, say it now. Ashhadu. And they would say, ashhadu. And, and, la ilaha. And they will say it after me And then I'll say Okay let me translate So you know what you're saying There is no God they say, There is no God Except Allah Except Allah What's wrong with that? Is that, is that, is that, is that not the shahada? So what's wrong with that? There are other gods right? Number one That's one thing that's wrong with it What else? Okay, good. The point of the shahada is not to prove that Allah exists, rather it's to prove that Allah is the only one that you worship. Because the prophets, as we've previously taken in the other lessons, they never came to teach people that Allah is the only God in existence. Because they always believed that. And even if they did, even if they, even, even if you do convince someone, Assalamu alaikum, even if you do convince someone that, someone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He exists, is that enough to make you a Muslim? No, why? As Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab ibn Sulaiman al Tamimi rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned in his Al Qawaid al Arba'a, he said, An ta'lama an al kuffar al ladina qatalahum Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, muqiruna an Allah al khaliq al raziq al muhi al mumit al mudabbiru li jami' al umur. He said, Have knowledge of something. What is it? That the kuffar to whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was going to give da'wah and he was fighting with them and so on and so forth because of their kuffar. He said that those kuffar, the kuffar of Quraysh, they believed Allah was the creator. They believed Allah was the provider. They believed Allah was the one who controlled everything. They believed he was the one who gave life. They believed he was the one who gave death. 
They believe this about Allah. وَلَمْ بَعْتْ وَلَمْ يُدْخِلْهُمْ ذَلِكَ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ But despite the fact that they believed Allah created them, Allah provided, Allah sustains, despite the fact that they believed all these things about Allah, وَلَمْ يُدْخِلْهُمْ ذَلِكَ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ That did not cause them to enter into Islam. So me, when I gave that out to these people, and then they took their shahada, I brought them, if anything, to knowing exactly what the Quraysh knew. I brought them to the same level of Abu Jahl. Or maybe I brought them to the same level of Iblis, because even Iblis knows Allah like this. Iblis says, what do you say? He says, Rabbi, Rabbi, my Lord, anzim me ila yawm yuba'athun. He said, let me live to the day of judgment. So what did that show you? Shaitan, he knew that Allah was Rabb. Rabb means creator. Rabb, if you believe someone's your Rabb, it means he created you. It means he controls you, right? He owns you. So then, not just that, the fact that Shaitan said, Rabbi, anzimni ila yawm yuba'athun. Let me live to the day of judgment. What does that show? Iblis also knew what? The day of judgment exists. Not only that, he even knew that Allah has the ability to extend your life. So Iblis knew all these things. If, if, if I told you, if I told you, Akhi, what does it mean to, to believe in Islam? You probably suffice yourself with saying, to believe that Allah created you, Allah exists, there's a day of judgment, Allah controls everything. Now you think, well, this guy's a Muslim, right? Like in Allah said about Iblis, Abba! He rejected, وَاسْتَكْبَرَ Became arrogant, وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِ And he's a kafir. He became from the kuffar. This, and after he became a kafir, he's still saying, Rabbi, my Lord. He's affirming Allah as his Lord. He's making dua. He's actually worshipping Allah in this regard. He's making dua. أَنْذِرْنِي Make me live إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُمْ to the day of judgment. Like Allah is saying, still you are a kafir. Why? To show you it's not as simple as just knowing these things. Rather, it was to teach the people that there is no one worthy to be worshipped in truth. All of the other religions, they believe Allah exists, but they worship someone else besides Allah. That was the problem. So in the fact that I told this atheist, or I told this Christian, say the shahada, okay? There is no one, there is no God except Allah. I didn't, suffi I didn't suffice them in what they needed to know. In fact, what I taught them was no different to what the Quraysh knew. Okay, what else is wrong with saying that? There is no God but Allah. Say that again, sorry? Yeah, God, the term God is even the wrong word to use. God can come in so many forms. There's God. God can become a female when it's a goddess. God can become pro when it's gods. God can become half when it's demigod. God can have a son, son of God. God can have a mom, mother of God, which they call Mary. Right? Children of God. Like, God, the term, has got so many problems with it. And we Ahl Sunnah, we don't use terms that can be misconstrued, that can be stretched. Because that time will come when people will start, to, will start to manipulate that term. They'll start to use that term for its filthy meaning inside of it. And I remember I said this about a year ago. I said a year ago, I said, watch the feminists are going to soon start saying, why can't you say God's a woman? Why you say God? Why you say, because God's agenda is male, right? When you say God, now you're saying he's a male. You're saying God's a man. Like in Ahl Sunnah, do we affirm that Allah is a male? Do we affirm that he's a female? Do we negate he's a female? Allah never gave gender to himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't talk about it. We don't open that door. Allah, we, we don't ascribe gender to Allah. He never ascribed the gender to himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So in, you need evidence to, uh, to, to affirm or negate. In the absence of evidence, we withhold. So then the fact that you say God, the feminists are going to get angry one day, right? Because they love to just, you know, something inside them just, they have to compete with men. So they say, God, you made him a man. Why can't God be a woman? And recently, this uh, silly woman, may Allah guide her, she came out with a, her album and it's called God's a, a Woman, right? <laughs> or God's a Female, something like that. What's it called? God's a Woman or God's a Female? Yeah, God's a Woman. And I was like, A'udhu Billah. And we said it just about a year ago. And now they already came out with it. So there's a lot wrong with what I said. So then now I look back and I think to myself, subhanAllah, all those people who I gave that to at my hand, the overwhelming majority of them, they left Islam. I mean, to be honest, I don't even know if they entered in the first place. But they're not practicing till today. Why? Because if you give a person the true taste of Iman, he sniffs it, they don't leave. They can't. 
reckon I never gave it to them because I was ignorant of it myself and then so many people after as well so the point that I'm making, you understand here, is conditions. Conditions come before the action. So in me giving that to this person, I had to bring, I, I, was, I should have brought this person to a place where the conditions of la ilaha illallah were satisfied. It's like a checklist. Okay, okay, you're about to say the shahada. So one, two, three. Like, I don't have to sit there with a checklist. And some people do that. They go a bit extreme. They're like, okay, we're going to go for the conditions of la ilaha illallah. And then they do it like a checklist like that. You're right. You can make it more organic and a bit more, less robotic and a bit more, you know, a bit more just like, you know, smooth. <laughs> But the point is, you have to bring a person to this point. I remember one guy, I was at the da'wah table one time, one guy, he took shahada of a brother. He took, well, it's not a brother because he wasn't a Muslim, and I'll tell you why he wasn't a Muslim in a second. He told me, he said, come. He said, take the shahada of him. So I came. He was like, yeah, okay. Da'wah man's going to take a shahada. I was like, okay, no problem, inshallah. Let me take the shahada of the brother. I'm ready. I'm like, you, you, you explain everything to him. He goes to me, yes, I explained everything to him. He's so happy, he's so confident. The guys, you know, about to take a shahada. After the shahada, literally about 20 minutes after the shahada, we're still chatting. He's like, yeah, man, pray, praise be to Jesus. I was like, what? He's something like that or something like Jesus, son of God. He said, he said something about Jesus. I was like, what? I was like, bro, what do you, you can't say that no more. He said, like, what do you mean? Jesus is not son of God? He said, no. I was like, what do you, what? I looked at the guy, what have you been talking to him about for the last... Half an hour, 45 minutes. The guy is still a kafir, bro. He's telling me, Jesus, son of God. What the hell is wrong with you guys? And the guy is there, like, right. Because you know what they do? They just, I, I, I don't even know what he said to him. But, and that, that's so common. That's so common. So it's important that we learn the conditions. The conditions are that which comes before. The conditions are that which comes before. That which comes before. Hey guys, I really hope that you benefited from that video. Before you go, I want to ask you a really important question. Have you guys ever thought about studying Islam and seeking knowledge? If not, then I want you to reflect upon this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet said that seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every single Muslim. Of course, that doesn't mean you have to be a scholar, but you have to know the basics in order for you to be the best possible slave and worshipper of Allah that you can possibly be. So, we decided to provide a solution for this. You see, many people want to study, but they don't have the means or the resources to do so. So we set up an online institute called the Knowledge College, where you can study Islam from the comfort of your own home. So if you want more information on the Knowledge College and you'd like to sign up, go to the link below, check out the website, and hopefully we we'll see you on the other side. Assalamu alaikum.